Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer. I call myself the Frosted Maple here on YouTube. So, um, I've been away for the past couple weeks. Uh, for those of you, oh, sorry, actually, before we go too far, as you can notice, it is summer. My freckles are all out in full force. Um, like, look at my face. I, <laughs> I have a ton of freckles. I even have freckles on my lips. So I, I don't, <laughs> I don't tan, I just freckle. And if the freckles all come together, it kind of creates like a tan, kind of, maybe. Eh. That's okay. Um, it's hot here, so I apologize for my appearance if any of you are offended by the bra straps. But uh, yeah, I, I need, need to be wearing one. Uh, so I have a sundress on, as you can see. Lovely little tiki batik print. And uh, it's been about what was it 33 34 today celsius uh it's been hot um so i'm outside doing this video um yeah and i wanted to let you know for the past couple weeks i have been in ontario for those of you who have uh, watched some of my earlier videos uh you might remember that my dad passed away in march and august 5th was his birthday so he would have been 65 if he had lived 65 oh no he would have been 75 if he had lived so um on his birthday we went uh me my brother and my sister-in-law we traveled uh, back to ontario and we scattered his ashes uh yeah so it was nice and uh it was super emotional not only because we were scattering the ashes but we were also helping mom sort through everything um, you know, figuring out what to donate, what to keep. Um, but she did, she did great uh, with letting go of some things and keeping some things that were important to her. So really glad that was done. But as you can imagine, uh, it, it was it was a roller coaster, right? Sometimes we're laughing and uh, you know enjoying an, an old memory, and then then we're crying. So it was just a lot of up and down. Uh, it wasn't really a vacation, even though I had two weeks off from work. <laughs> it was emotionally and mentally exhausting. Um, but, I mean, worth it. I mean, we you can't get away from it, right? If you have parents, unfortunately, you know, they will pass. And this is stuff that you have to deal with. Yeah, I'm kind of um, a stoic in, in that way. Um, yeah, where it's just you know life just throws things at you and it's it's just up to you to try to navigate it and um, recognize that you can't control what happens to you you can only control how you respond to the situation so I try to be as supportive as I can with my mom uh, and help her through anything while also kind of self-managing what I was going through and luckily my brother, my sister-in-law, my mom were super supportive when I needed it, and I hope that they found me super supportive when they needed it. So now I'm back at work, <laughs> and uh, um, when I returned home, uh, oh my goodness, so I had a friend look after my cats, and uh, for those of you that don't know, I have two cats. I have one that's black, and her name is Olive, and I have another one who is Tabby, and her name is Twig. So uh, apparently Olive hid for like the two weeks I was gone. Um, and Swig kind of warms up after a while. Uh, but what happened is when I came home, uh, I was coming in the house. I was laden down with, with my stuff, with my luggage and whatnot. And uh, Twig greeted me at the door and just, it was nonstop meowing for, I don't know, about 45 minutes as I put everything away um, and then tried to find Olive because she wouldn't come up out when I called her. So I'm walking around the house calling Olive and there's Twig trailing behind me, yeah, just going meow, 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 meow. <laughs> I'm even petting her thinking, yes, I see you, I'm back. I'm giving her some loving and I'm petting her and she's still meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so I don't know if she's giving me hell or if it was a whole case of, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're back, mom. Like, you know, rub my butt, rub my ears, get my face, that sort of thing. Uh, but she followed me throughout the house. Like I said, I, I got unpacked, I put things away. Uh, Olive still wasn't coming out. So I went looking uh, underneath the beds for her. 
uh, in cabinets, behind things. I finally found her downstairs in the basement. She was on top of uh, an old wardrobe that I have down there that I just use for storage. And at first she was just in this like little tiny black ball all kind of curled up in the corner. And uh, she wasn't coming out and she's just looking at me and her eyes were huge. Right? Like, who the heck are you? And so I got closer and I'm calling her name, right? And she's still not moving. She's just staring at me like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, who are you? And so I finally, I, I put my hand up on the wardrobe and, and I stick a finger out and she sniffs it. And then you know, it was her turn to meow at me. Uh, not quite as long, only for about half an hour as she followed me around the house. And uh, just, it was a constant meow, 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 meow. So Twig stopped meowing at me and Olive started meowing at me. <laughs> Eventually everybody settled down. But I felt bad um, because when I got back, um, there's a lady that cuts my lawn for me and she had turned the hose on, it uh, or the sprinkler on. It was starting to get quite warm, so I didn't want the grass to burn. So I just stepped out of the house for a couple minutes to shut the water off and oh, twig broke my heart. Okay, so I step out and, and I'm literally, I go down my stairs, I turn, I take a couple steps, shut the water off, come back in the house, but on my way up, well, and my way down, all I heard was meow, meow, and scratching at the door. So, of course, I felt just like the worst pet parent ever. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I know you're traumatized that I left. So I was like, but I'm back now. I, I swear, I'm, I'm not disappearing for two weeks. I'm back. <laughs> so uh, they settled down after a while, and I left the house a few more times, and uh, now they're good now. I, I left for work today. I came back and and they're fine so they're over the trauma of uh, me leaving you know a little bit of separation anxiety but you know I, I think that's normal with uh, animals and and their owners although with everything I do for them I think I kind of work for them you know and I think that's how it goes when you have cats so they own you you know, or they at least tolerate you oh. Sorry, loud vehicle going by. I'm using the headset because I'm, I'm outside and I'm hoping that that helps. I don't know, I'll, I'll find out. So the garden um, is like ready to harvest. Now, because it's been so hot and it's going to be in the mid to high 30s all week, uh, I'm going to be doing what I like to term midnight canning. So midnight canning is literally your, your canning at night. Uh, once everything cools off, uh, I don't have air conditioning. So I have fans to kind of circulate the air. We do get quite cold in the valley at night. So it can be 36, 37 during the day, but then it drops down to 11 overnight. So I just open up the windows. I have some fans that I put in the windows and that draws in the cold air and the house really cools off. So typically though, I usually wake up about four o'clock and I'm freezing. Uh, and then I run around the house, taking all the fans out, closing up all the windows, closing up all the curtains. Uh, I have blackout curtains, so insulated blackout curtains. Couldn't get that out. <laughs> and so I close the house all up and it stays pretty, pretty okay. Uh, or I might just be deluding myself and, and maybe it's really hot in my house, but I'm just like, oh no, no, there's a slight difference. It's fine. <laughs> Canning, um, it's going to heat up my house and because I don't have that AC, it's really unpleasant, uh, to have the stove going and pots boiling and everything happening. I'm just working up, up a sweat like crazy and I don't want my house to get that hot. So I'll either be canning, uh, like I said, at night, kind of like 10 o'clock at night is when I'll start my canning, you know, for a couple hours, or I'll be doing it like bright and early in the morning, as in I'll be waking up at about uh, four or five and doing the canning then. Um, so I will be doing this on the weekend. <laughs> Because there is no way I can can for a couple hours in the middle of the night and then go to work and have enough brain capacity to actually do my job. Uh, yeah, that's just, that's just not going to happen. 
now I will be doing stuff throughout the week. Uh, so I'm going to show you what my garden uh, looks like and talk about some of the stuff that I will be doing. Uh, I'm going to try to keep myself and my house as cool as possible. So I'm going to start with the stuff that um, doesn't need to be canned. So it just needs to be blanched and frozen or just cut up and frozen. So let me show you what I got to deal with. So here are my beets and potatoes. Um, as you can see, this bed is full. And the only thing I did here was plant one row of potatoes and one row of beets. And the potatoes, the tops are starting to die off. So um, yeah, they should be ready to pick or dig out of the ground. Um, I'm kind of thinking end of August, maybe early September at the latest. But yeah, they're looking to be doing quite well. And look at these beets. Oh, hello, beets. So these guys are popping out of the ground. I am going to be spending the weekend canning the beets and sorting through the beet tops. And I will be freezing, blanching and freezing the beet tops because I love them in omelets. Oh, and in soups and stews, that sort of thing. The only thing with potatoes is, um, of course, you never know <laughs> if you're going to get anything underneath the ground. So I'm kind of tempted to kind of stick my finger down and see if there's any there. But I'm going to resist that urge. And instead, I'm just going to be patient and I'm going to let them do their thing. And hopefully I have a lot of potatoes. I'm not too sure. But it'll be a surprise. Now check out this stuff. So I <laughs> feed birds every winter and this started to come up. At first I thought it was corn, but it turns out this is millet. So it's a grain. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It was just volunteered by the birds and the bird seed. And I have this little clump of millet. So yeah, this is going to be um, a little bit of a lesson as to uh, how to harvest it. Um, from what I understand, these will turn a golden color and then I will be able to harvest them. Um, these are very, very tiny though. I, I'm not too sure how to process the millet, but I will be giving it a go. So the chives have grown wild, as have the weeds. You go away for a couple weeks and the weeds are like, hey, hey, she's gone, quick, everybody, grow. But uh, the chives are pretty much done. Um, I will be cutting some up and sticking them in the freezer. This is lemon balm. Uh, turns out the lemon balm overpowered my mint this year. And yeah, it, I just have all lemon balm. Now I will be harvesting some of the leaves, drying it out. And I use it for tea because lemon balm is very good for anxiety and stress. My Swiss chard is still going great in uh, the various different sections. Um, yeah, so I will be blanching and freezing that as well. My tomato plants are overburdened with tomatoes. So you can see here, I've got... A bunch of tomatoes coming. I even have still some strawberries coming up and of course a weed. So I have started to eat the tomatoes but I will be freezing those and making some sauces and some salsa that sort of thing. Now I also have some rosemary here that I'll be drying and uh, my pepper plant is doing really good. I've got some more peppers to be pulling off. They're just little peppers, but still they're a nice snack size. Another tomato plant and again a ton of tomatoes and this, oh hello ant, you can see the size of the tomato. It's, it's about softball size. I also have basil that is now starting to flower so I'll be drying some of the basil and some of the rosemary. I'll also be making little um, frozen cubes of herbs, butter, oil, that sort of thing. And then I'll be popping them out to cook with throughout the winter. And more Swiss chard. 
And then this is Thai basil and catnip. So the Thai basil has flowered. The bees are loving it. Um, oh, there's a bee there. There he is. So, oh, there's another bee. Let's see if I can zoom in. Hello, bee. So yeah, um, so I'm leaving it. Um, I actually already have a ton of regular basil and the bees love this Thai basil. They go crazy for it every time it flowers. So I just kind of let it do its thing. And then catnip, I will be pulling off some of the catnip leaves and drying it out. So that way I can give my girls some uh, kitty drugs. <laughs> So in this bed, I have a butternut squash that has taken over. As you can see here, kind of goes all around the bed. I have a ton of flowers, um, but I'm not too sure how much fruit or vegetable I'm going to get off of it. And then, of course, I have my, uh, my lettuce, which is, this one is going to flower shortly. Um, because I went away for a couple weeks, I wasn't eating a lot of lettuce because, well, I wasn't here. So, yeah, it's starting to grow very tall and will undoubtedly be flowering. And my carrots this year did not do well at all. Um, I planted them in raised beds before and they've done quite well, but uh, I think the seed pack was a little old. So I um, only have a couple carrots coming and as you can see, the tops aren't even showing yet. And my onions. I need to pull the onions because the tops are dying off on this one. So it'll be ready to go. And I hope it's good. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm going to pull it right now. Let's see. Let's see. How are you, onion? Are you a good size onion? Oh, eh, not too bad. So, kind of on the small side. Yeah. Oof, my soil's dry. It's been super hot, but... And I've been watering every day, but... Still dry soil, but I'm going to pull this guy and take him inside. Now over here, I tried to grow celery this year, but the celery really didn't take. And um, I don't know if my expectation was just unrealistic, but it never really grew. I didn't get the big long stalks. Uh, I just got these short little guys. So that was uh, a failure. But it did give me some tops, and as you can see, it's already starting to die off. So I think what I'm going to do is I like to take the tops of celery, chop it up, and put it into soup stews, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to do with the celery. These are leeks, and they're probably good to leave in the ground for a little bit longer. Um, but I will be chopping them up and freezing them. Then I have, of course, more uh, Swiss chard and more onions. Now these onions, uh, um, as you can see, the one I pulled from the other bed is a purple onion, and then these ones I believe are the white onions. So I'll be pulling the onions as well. And the lettuce, well, uh, looks like the ants are enjoying it. <laughs> I'm feeding an entire ant colony because I can't eat that much lettuce. But yeah, that's what's happening in the garden. So that is it for me this week. I hope that all your gardens are coming in well. And I know some of you are in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, I believe you are switching into your spring as we switch into our fall. So I hope that you are able to get your gardens in and fill up your freezer. I will share with you guys over the next few weeks my bounty, my harvest bounty. And uh, yeah, let you know what went well, what didn't go well. But anyways, that is it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, that's it. Okay. Take care, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.